So I spend all this time talking about the Super Nintendo and its RPGs, but what about Sega? They had a respectable lineup of RPGs, and I've talked about a few, but there's one glaring omission. One huge series that Sega is the most famous for, or at least was back in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, that's right, Fantasy Star. I haven't talked about any Fantasy Star games. Well, that's gonna change today. I'm gonna spend the whole month of August going through all the Fantasy Star games, all the classic ones, before online anyway, and for this video right now, we won't be needing this. Gotta bust out this hunk of junk to talk about the first Fantasy Star. So welcome to Fantasy Month. You're an OG YouTube consumer if you know where I stole that from, by the way. Space Century 342, the planet of Palma. Scum! You do not sniff around in Lassic's affairs. Learn this lesson well. Lassic is leading our world to destruction. I tried to discover his plans, but I could not do much by myself. I have heard of a man with great strength named Odin. Maybe the two of you can stop Lassic. Blech. And with that, you're off. Having your backstory delivered by these huge anime-inspired portraits, and you almost never saw cutscenes like that. The manual gives you a bit more. A new religion that came from another galaxy with our Christian cross? Hmm. I wonder if this detail will ever come back into the series. The dead have risen, Robocops are ruthlessly hunting down anyone who opposes Lassic. The worst of all, the taxes are too damn high! The original Fantasy Star is one of the granddaddies of the JRPG. Takes a great deal from Dragon Warrior, just as much from Wizardry, arguably even more from Star Wars with a little dash of Studio Ghibli, than Sabrus, Cabrus, Sebrus Bass. We got a video game! What sets Fantasy Star apart from Final Fantasy, Dragon Warrior, Wizardry is that it's a world not designed to be traversed, rather one to be unraveled. Let me show you what I mean. Here is the entire world map of Dragon Warrior. A critical path run might look something like this. Most of the actual game is grinding to make your numbers higher, traveling to your next destination. There's a couple secrets, but for the most part, you're only really gated by how strong your character is. Fantasy Star is nothing like that. As soon as you're first in control of Alice, well, you're gonna be weak as hell, so you really can't go anywhere yet, but after you're over that initial hump, you have access to three towns, two different caves, two towns that you can visibly see on the world map but aren't yet able to go to, and a dungeon with a locked door that you can't do anything about yet. If you wanted to map out a Fantasy Star playthrough, there would be so much crisscrossing that attempting to draw one would just make the map an illegible mess. All that I just listed within a one minute commute from your starting position. Fantasy Star's world is so much more dense than other RPGs of its era. It takes cues from Zelda as much as it does from Dragon Warrior, where the experience is mostly made up of attempting to untangle this web of a game world. It's not as cut and dry what you're supposed to be doing at any given moment. Fantasy Star 1, I would categorize as a treasure hunter simulator. So much of this game is spent looking for weapons, items, trinkets that you may or may not even need. Its loop will go something like, you talk to NPC A, who might mention a certain object, exists. Maybe they'll also tell you what it does, but won't tell you where or how or any other details about it. NPC B might tell you that they know something cool is buried on some island somewhere, but they won't say what island or where or on what planet. Then when you're out adventuring, NPC C on a whole other planet will tell you about this secluded island in the middle of nowhere that once 50 years ago some guy went there, but nobody's ever gone back. Incredibly basic example, but the pattern holds. And all these treasure hunts are worthwhile too. It's always end game equipment or a vehicle or some other item that you don't know how you were living without. When the game starts, you're in this sci-fi utopian area where everything seems fine. You're told Lassic is leading your world to destruction, but by the looks of it here, is he? Your hometown looks like it's doing well. It's elevated off the ground for some reason, and there's this cool conveyor belt going directly to the fucking spaceport where, free of charge, granted you have a passport, a space shuttle will take you to another planet. It 
It's incredibly open-ended and non-linear. After gaining your own means of travel, you can almost go anywhere. Only when you begin untwirling these knots do you realize that the further off the beaten path you travel, the more dire the world's situation becomes. Before long, you're in burnt-out Hoovervilles where bums beg you for spare cans of cola, and mayors of towns will ask you to donate Metseda. There's three planets, Motavia, which is too hot, Deserus, which is too cold, and Palma, which is just right. Palma is basically cut into the equal halves, the civilized world and its savage underbelly. Matavia has one town where the governor lives, the capital of this whole civilization apparently, but the rest of the planet is a shithole, with one town even held hostage by a deadly gas field surrounding it. Then we have Deserus, which is so far flung, there's not even commercial passenger travel to it. You can only go there if you have your own spaceship. There's only two towns on the whole planet, one with Palmanians, essentially stand-ins for humans, but not quite the same as we may or may not learn in two, and the other with native Desorians, this weird race of tall, bluish-green guys. Deserus plays out like one gargantuan, planet-sized dungeon. A series of connecting caves not unlike Death Mountain in Zelda 2. Fantasy Star 1 is also a first-person dungeon crawler. Using these first-person passages, sometimes they're transitions between two areas, sometimes they're single-floor mazes with exactly one treasure chest and nothing else to find, sometimes they're multi-level, complex labyrinths which will drive you fucking crazy and have nasty pitfall traps right before the actual way you're supposed to go. Here's a confession. I didn't look up any maps, but I didn't exactly make my own either. This isn't a real Fantasy Star cartridge, and I played through its re-release on Switch. Sega Ages Fantasy Star is fantastic. It gives you your party's status on the top right, and an auto-filling map on the bottom. The auto-map, useful as it is, kind of ruins the game. And not just because it's inauthentic by putting the graph paper out of the hands of a potential player. It spoils secrets. When you're walking, ordinarily you can't see anything on the walls unless you physically turn to face them. And Fantasy Star has a nasty habit of hiding doors leading to chests with a thousand Metseda or a burger or, I don't know, the fucking final boss. Well, in Sega Ages Fantasy Star, if you just look at the map, it'll always tell you where secrets are. Is that cheating? Yeah, maybe. Do I care? Eh, a little. They included an easy mode as well, but here's why I don't believe it's necessary. Fantasy Star is balanced around its non-linearity. You're forced to grind immediately when you turn on the game for the first time. But after that, 80% of the world's random encounters are about the same degree of difficulty. Up until the final dungeon, you're dealing with low mid-game types. And by the way, the actual fights themselves are skewed incredibly in the player's favor. Both you and opposing monsters have incredibly small damage outputs relative to your max HP. You're never going to get one-shotted, or two-shotted, or even three-shotted, no matter how far behind you get on equipment upgrades. Battles are more of an endurance than they are anything else, so you can always be prepared. Carrying enough burgers always guarantees a victory. Your demise most of the time will be because you ran out of magic points and healing items, so you had no way to recover. You don't die from cheap ambushes like in so many other older JRPGs. In Dragon Warrior, if you cross the wrong bridge, you'll find out real fast. But in Fantasy Star, you can go pretty much anywhere and not need to worry about getting crapped on too hard by the local wildlife. Some abilities are overpowered as all hell, like Magic Wall. You can win entire boss fights up until the end game just by casting it and becoming effectively immune to all damage. You can only run into one type of enemy at once, but most of the time, they're not alone, as indicated by these numbers in the top right. It's a little annoying that you can't manually select which enemies you're attacking. Instead, the game just picks a random target, but you get used to it. It's the complete opposite of Final Fantasy 1, where you need to be hyper-specific as to who you're targeting. And if forced to pick my poison, I would choose random targets over ineffective strikes without fail. I love that at all times, you can see how much HP enemies have remaining. Even Lassic himself becomes a little less scary when you realize he only has 238 hit points. 
Hell, that's barely more than I have. Then the real final boss, which was foreshadowed super early on. They take away its HP count, and is effectively unnerving. I doubt he has any more than 300, but 300 is 300, and no number could be anything. It could even be 300, you know how much I've always wanted one of those. You kill Asik, go to the governor's mansion, only to find that he's nowhere to be found. In his place, one final dungeon and a dark spirit. Once vanquished, Alice is crowned the new queen of the Algo Star system. And my final playtime came in at 19 hours, 32 minutes. So that was Fantasy Star 1, an incredible game, especially for the time. And it's amazing that even today in current year, it still holds up and it's still fun to play. I will see you back here in three days time on Friday the 4th. I talk about Fantasy Star 2 on the Genesis. Shout out to the patrons. Shout out to the Furious Action Gamer. Shout out, as always, to William Robert Lee. Never trust anyone who needs a haircut. Goodbye.